Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this Badger applique block using fusible adhesive. So a quick note on the pattern. This is the newest pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. You can find information at Shiny Happy World, and I'll also drop in a link um, below this post. But if the, it's because it's a club, it's a little bit of a timed release. So if you are in the club, right now, that is from January 15th until February 14th, the pattern for this is going to be in the clubhouse. If you're not in the club yet and you're looking at the, and you're seeing this video in that time window, if you join the club now, you get immediate access to the pattern. If you're watching this video later, if it is after February 14th, uh, 2020, um, you're gonna to wanna to look in the shop at shinyhappyworld.com and I'll drop a link to the pattern. Uh, once it's listed in the shop, I'll drop a link to uh, where you can find that uh, in the description at the bottom of this video. So for right now, here's how to make it. Okay, before we get started on actually layering the pieces in, I did wanna talk briefly about the pattern because this one's a little unusual. Almost always, I'm able to fit all the pieces for one of my blocks onto a single sheet of the fusible adhesive. This is heat and bond like, that light, that's the brand that I use. Um, this one, because the eye patches are quite large on a badger, I had to print it on two sheets, but I just wanted to give you a little tip for saving some space. I put all of these pieces up in one half of the page, kind of shifted them up at the top, so that if you're printing out multiples of these, like maybe you wanna do a quilt that's all different badger blocks, um, you can turn this page over and feed it through a second time and get another block's worth of eye patches and inner ears. So just that's a little tip on how you can conserve some of the paper because these printable sheets are a little expensive, but they are, I think, 100% worth it because I really hate to trace. So that's just a quick tip on saving sheets um, on your fusible adhesive. So now let's talk about the pattern pieces. So I've got my block here. As always, I use quilt as you go and I have a different method for it than most people use. I quilt my background block to my batting, but I don't put a backing on until I sew all of the blocks together and then I do just one final round of quilting all around the edge just stitching in the ditch. I can do a twin size quilt in about a half an hour. It's all straight lines, pretty far apart, so it's easy to do uh, through the machine. If you want more information about that, you can look at, um, I've got a free workshop online that takes you through all the steps of how I do it. But I just wanted to remind you here that this is background block, quilted to the batting, cotton batting, and all pressed, I let it, uh, I press it with lots of steam, so I pre-shrink it before I'm adding my face to it, and then I just let it cool on my ironing board before I move it. So it is flat, smooth, pressed, ready to go. Here are all of our pieces, and I do wanna take you through the pieces for the badger and talk a little bit about coloring because badger coloring is a little different from some animals, and I'm just gonna talk you through it and also um, what all the pieces are that you're gonna have. So the main piece that you're gonna have is the head. And I decided to do the head all one piece and then just lay the eye patches over it. First of all, that's gonna make the placement really easy. And then you never have, I didn't wanna have any white um, laid over a darker color because then you've gotta do some fiddly stuff to keep the background from showing through. And I've got a video I'll link to that shows you how to do that. But to make things super easy, the actual construction of this block I've got this so that we've got, um, the head is all one piece. So you've got the head, um, you're going to, let me back up a second. So the first thing you're gonna do after you print out all of your pieces, you're going to roughly cut around them and fuse them to the back side of the fabric. And when I say rough cut, I mean you're gonna cut all the way around the piece and you're gonna leave a little paper all around the edges and you'll leave a little extra extra wherever there's a dotted line and you'll see why in a second. So the reason you do this is when you fuse it down, now that adhesive goes all the way to the edge of the paper so that when you cut the piece out a nice clean cut, you have the adhesive going right up to the very last thread of that cut piece. So rough cut the pieces all out, 
fuse them to the back side of the fabric, and then go in and do a clean cut. And a clean cut means cut right on the solid line and leave a little extra wherever there is a dotted line. And I'll show you here is a piece with a clean cut, and this piece beyond the dotted line is where it's gonna tuck behind the head. So here are the pieces that you've got, and we're gonna talk a little bit about color. So the badger's face is primarily white. If you're doing a different colored block, like maybe shades of pink, which I'll show you at the end of this video, your lighter color is gonna be the face. So we've got a face piece, and then we've got two eye patches, and those are gonna be in your darker color. Here they are in black. Now, these two pieces you can see I've marked. Here I've marked the position of the eyes, and here on this one I've marked the position of the nose and the mouth. Do this while your paper is still fused to the back. Hold your picture, hold your cut piece up to a window and just you can, you'll be able to see the lines then through the fabric. I don't think you can see them here, but with the light shining from a window shining behind it, you can see that nose and the mouth really clearly through the fabric, even on a dark fabric. Draw a little circle inside the shape of the nose and then draw right on where the mouth is gonna be. So that's gonna give you your stitching line. I just use a fine tip Sharpie, nothing fancy. So make sure you do that before you peel off the paper backing, because once you peel that off, you no longer have that guide. So for this one, I marked the nose and the mouth, and on the eye patches, I just marked the position of the eyes. You've also got a shoulder piece, and it has two dotted lines at the top and the bottom where it tucks under the chin, and the bottom dotted lines are showing where it lines up with the edge of the block and that bottom edge is going to be um, sewn into the seam allowance. So we've also got a nose, just a solid black nose. And then the ears on badgers are a little weird. On almost all animals, the inner ear is light and the outer ear is dark, but on badgers they're different. Badgers have white tips at the tops and sides of their ears and they're black on the inside of the ear. So um, I found it really hard. I did this wrong several times. Um, just kept forgetting and fusing it on the wrong way. So the bigger parts of the ears are the lighter color. The smaller ear triangles are the darker color. Then you also have two eyes, which I do all of my eyes and noses in solid black. Now the trick with a badger is if I put this black eye on a black or a nearly black background, this is actually a very dark gray, but it's so dark that you would not see that eye. So your pattern also includes two slightly larger ovals, and those are for if you are doing a natural colored badger, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of a lighter color behind your eyes so that your eyes will show up. Let me put that a little bit closer to the camera and you'll see this in more detail later. I don't use white around the eye because I think when you have whites around the eyes, your animal looks scared. Even if he's got a smile on him, whites around the eyes are kind of a universal animal world, I'm scared. So I just use a slightly lighter version of whatever the background. So this is in the warm neutrals bundle, which is where I pulled these grays and whites from. This is just the next darkest gray. It's just light enough that that eye will show on it. And it becomes a little bit of a, of a division between there. If you look at actual photos of badgers, you actually usually can't see their eyes. So, um, but for our blocks, we want to emphasize the eyes a little bit. All right, so here's how we put it together. So the first thing we're gonna do, let me get this out of the way here. So we've got a clear block. So I'm gonna shift this up just a hair so that you're seeing the whole bottom of the block here. So we're gonna start with the shoulders. I always like to position the shoulders first. And they peel off the paper backing and just line that up with the bottom edge of the block. Then we're gonna lay the head down and it's gonna go over those shoulders. It's gonna overlap the shoulders a little bit. Peel off that backing, and here we go. So one thing I do want to mention, a lot of times I'll see people who will put theirs, kind of center the whole thing in a block, but if you do that, you're chopping off the shoulders. 
Um, you, I always try, I think of this as like a photograph where somebody, you don't see the whole body in the photograph. You just see the head popping into the frame of the photo. If you're working on a project where it's really important to you that the head is centered in the block, instead of bringing the shoulders up and doing that, just leave the shoulders off and just have a floating head. It's going to be more of a, of a graphic design kind of image and it'll look less it'll look more like a decoration and less like a photograph which is what I'm going with for in the layout that I usually do but um, if that works best for your project just leave the shoulders off so the head is now overlapping those shoulders a little bit and now I'm going to put the eye patches on so the eye patches just so you know, we're clear here they've got a solid line all the way around and a little bit of a dotted line down here where it tucks under the nose. And I designed these so that they would really just sit right on. You want them to just cover up that edge there. There we go, there's one. And here's the other. So on both of these, this bottom edge of the eye patch lines up with where he starts getting whiskery on the sides. And then the top edge pretty much just lines up with your, the curve of the head. And we might need to adjust that a little bit more once we get the nose on there, but we'll see. But so far that's looking pretty good. And I actually kind of like it. I'm deliberately not lining it up exactly. I, I like it when a little bit kind of hangs off the top. It looks a little bit like a, it makes it look a little bit like a silk screen or uh, something where they, sometimes you'll have the registration deliberately off just a little bit just to make it more interesting. So now I've got our nose, and I'm just going to overlap that. It covers up the bottom tips of those eye patches, so that's good. Now we've got the ears, and we start with the bigger of the two triangles, and the ears just tuck behind the head a little bit. There's one, and here's the other. And you can change where you put them a little bit. You can move them further out to the sides and further up. Those will all kind of affect the expression of the face a little bit. So just um, play around and move them until you are happy with where they are. And now we're going to do the small triangles. And these also tuck behind there. You know what I'm going to do. Hold those together and shift them under there. And now I think I've got this a little too much of an overlap there. So you want to keep, now is the time to rearrange all the pieces how you want them because once you get it fused down, you cannot move these pieces again. All right. So if you look at photographs of badgers, whoops, shifted that more than I wanted to. If you look at photographs of badgers, these, the inner ears really are just kind of a continuation of the, the patches over the eyes. So I'm trying to line up the edges of these ear triangles with the edges of these patches, roughly. They don't have to be exactly, but that's how you get that distinctive kind of swoopy look that they have to their patches. Hang on a second, I need to adjust my nose a bit. I bumped that. All right, we are almost done. Now I'm going to do some inner eyes, or rather the eye backings that will let us see the eyes on his face. And if you're doing your badger in fantasy colors where you don't need this, just leave them out. So these, these two bigger ovals are optional pieces. So I want to get those nice and level there. And now I'm going to temporarily put the small eyes on there, but I'm going to take them off in a second and show you one more step. So there's one eye. So I'm putting them on there now just so I can see when it's just the lighter colored eye, he looks a little, uh, a little creepy, I think. Uh, so I'm putting these on here to get the full effect so I know really what the face is going to look like. 
and I am happy with all of that layout. I think I want to just tip this nose just a little bit there. Shift this over just a hair. Shift his nose over just a little bit more. All right, I like that. So I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board and fuse it down, but I wanna take off these dots, the, the center pupils first. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fuse all of this down and then I'm gonna go back to my sewing machine and I am going to stitch around just these inner eyes in a matching gray thread. Normally I outline everything in black, but I don't want to outline these in black because they really are just a background to these eyes. I don't want to emphasize that shape at all. I just want it to kind of disappear and just exist to highlight that eye. So I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to just stitch around those eyes and then I'll come back and I'll do a second round where I'll fuse the black pupils down. So I'll come back in between and show you that step. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> I have got the, the lighter circles for around the eyes fused down. Now I'm gonna pull that up closer so you can see. So I fused everything down and then I went and with a matching gray thread, I stitched around the eye. Now that I've done that, I'm going to put my eye dots back on. Now I'm going to fuse those in place and then I'm going to stitch around the whole thing in black and I'll come back and show you that. But before I do, I want to explain why I do this in two steps. So if I fused everything down and then tried to stitch around that larger oval in the matching thread, I would have a really, really small path that I need to stitch. And I'm pretty good at stitching around tight shapes, small shapes and tight curves, but I don't want to have to be perfect. I want to leave myself a little bit of room for error. So if I, if I did that, if I went off my path a little bit with that light gray and I went into the eye, that would be a really noticeable mistake. And I'm, I'm pretty tolerant of mistakes, but that's one that I would probably feel like I needed to tear out and do again because it would just make the eyes look really weird and maybe injured in some way. So I just make it easier for myself, leave that black circle off, stitch around the, the gray oval, give myself a little bit of room for error by doing that, now I'll go in and fuse that on and stitch around it and not have to worry so much about my stitching being absolutely perfect. So I'll be back in just a second and show you all of the stitching and kind of talk you through the stitching path that I took. All right, here we are with all of the stitching done. Um, you can see I use black thread, just simple straight line stitching, and I like to go around it three times because I like to get this kind of sketchy look to it. So I try and uh, deliberately don't go exactly on my lines. When I do the mouth, I always try and make it go exactly on my lines. But everywhere else, I actually like that tiny little bit of variation. I want it to look a little bit like a drawing in a sketchbook. So he is all done. Uh, just to give you a quick route that I took, I try and minimize the number of times I need to start and stop my stitching. So I started right inside in the nose, just inside this eye patch, and I went once around the nose. I only do once around the nose and the eyes because it's black on black, so you can't see that stitching any anyway. So I go once around the nose, and then I went up and around once. On my second pass back, I went and did one, two, three over the ear, and then continued, and then the third time around. And then I did do, just went over my stitching at the bottom, at the top of the nose here and did the same thing on this side, up and around once. On my way back, I went past the, the inner ear and then went one, two, three, and then doubled over there and continued down for the second uh, pass around this eye patch and then one more pass around that. Then I did tie off. And then I started up in here and I did just the bottom half of the face and I went around all these things once, twice, three times. And then instead of fastening off, I just doubled over here and went once, twice, 
twice. I'm sorry, went once and then I went up, back, three, and then doubled, doubled over that and then went around this way, past that, one, two, three, past that again, and then a third pass across the top of the head. Once around each of the eyes, and then just around the shoulders, I started here and went one, two, three, and then just did one little pass here. That's not going to be seen because it'll be hidden in the seam allowance, and then one, two, three here, and tie it off. So, one other little tip I'm going to give you. When you're stitching on very dark fabric, it's really easy to miss something. It's easy to miss the eyes. It's easy to miss this little patch between the top of the eye patch and the ear. So, flip your block over, and from the back side, you'll be able to see really clearly if you missed anything. So just, uh, it's a good idea. I always flip mine over and just give it a quick look, just to, if nothing else, just to make sure I remembered to do both eyes. So that is that block. And again, you can't see the stitching around the gray behind the eyes. That's because that is just functional stitching. I don't want to see it. It's not part of the design. It is just there to um, to hold that in place where all the rest of the stitching is there to hold it in place and to be a design feature for example it makes his chin more clearly defined where if that stitching wasn't there the white would just blend into the white so that is the finished badger block and now i'm going to show you a couple of other color uh, variations color options for it okay here he is, all finished in kind of natural colors. And people always ask what fabrics I used for the different blocks, so I'm gonna take you through that. Um, the background is from the Rainbow Sherbert background fabric bundles. And the face is all from the Warm Neutrals fat quarter bundle. So including the, the lighter gray behind his eyes. So that's the realistic badger. I've been doing pink pink on pink on pink. And here is the pink version of the badger for any of you who are making all pink quilts. Um, this one uses the Pretty Pinks fabric bundle and that is for the, the face and the background. All of that fabric is in that fabric bundle. And one more. This one, I just did a total fantasy badger face. I am not trying to go for realism at all. Um, the background, just like the, the natural one, the background is also from the Rainbow Sherbert fabric bundle. And both of the fabrics for his face are from the Dots Fat Quarter bundle. I love this, um, this print that's got the dots and then the cross hatching behind it. So that's one of my favorites and I haven't been using it very much lately. So I'm going to pull that out and use that more for the Funny Faces blocks in the next few months, just to play around a little bit with those fabrics that I really like. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next month with a new funny face.